Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Midday Live. I am AC Benewa Nyam Otu. Uh, we are also coming to you live from our studios here at Adesawe. This bulletin is also live on DSTV channel 279 and on Facebook forward slash TV3 Ghana. My name is AC Benewa Otu. Let's look at our top stories coming up this afternoon. Office of the Special Prosecutor has filed new charges against Boko Central MP Mahama Ayariga. We'll bring you more on that. A financial analyst says the return of CEO of Men's Gold is no guarantee. Money's owed customers will be paid. And on our story of the week, we take a look at happenings at the state broadcaster, GBC. And on the foreign front, social media giant Facebook has been fined $5 billion over improper use of data of its clients. So we have details of these, including sports and entertainment, all in the next one hour. Let's do a very first story. And the Office of the Special Prosecutor has brought up new charges against Member of Parliament for Boko Central Mahama Yarega. The new charges, which mainly hinged on the abuse of power, uh, public office for private gains by the MP, comes on the back of an ongoing suit of Mahama Yarega. The special prosecutor has begun the prosecution of Boko Central MP after charging him for fraudulently evading tax and dealing in foreign currency without a license. The court has struck out three charges leveled against the MP, leaving Ayarga to answer to the charge of using public office for private benefit. The new six charges would seem a solidification of the only standing charge by the Office of the Special Prosecutor to have the MP answer fully to the issue of the use of his office for personal profit. The MP in the new suit is alleged to have collaborated with a public officer for the private officer's private uh, profits. Mahama Yariga is going to answer two charges that bother on his acquisition of three Toyota Land Cruisers with a loan from Parliament. The MP is also accused of evading taxes after he paid a duty of just a little over 6,000 cities when he imported three Toyota Land Cruisers instead of approved duty of 35,000 cities. The special prosecutor accuses the Member of Parliament for stealing the three uh, selling the three Toyota vehicles uh, which were purchased with a loan from Parliament meant for his use as a public officer. The businessman who allegedly assisted the MP to evade taxes is cited in the new suit. And let's stay more on this particular development. I'm joined on phone by a legal practitioner, Bobby Bunsen, as we throw more light on the said new charges. Good afternoon, Mr. Bunsen. Thanks for joining us. Mr. Bunsen, if you can hear me, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon, Mr. Bunsen. Can you hear me now? Also, we'll try and get Mr. Bansin on the line and then also uh, bring to you developments of this particular issue where the special press office of a special prosecutor has brought up new charges against member of parliament for Boko Central Mahama Ayarika. The new charges, which mainly hinged on abuse of public office uh, for private gain by the MP, comes on the back of an ongoing suit uh, of Mahama Ayarika. The special prosecutor has now begun prosecution of the Boko Central MP for charging after charging him for fraudulently evading tax and dealing in foreign currency without a license. The court has tracked out three charges leveled against the MP, leaving uh, Ayariga to answer to the charge of using public office for private benefit. The new six charges would seem a solidification of the only standing charge by the said uh, office of a special prosecutor to have the MP answer fully uh, to the issue of his office 
for uh, personal profit. We are trying to get uh, Bobby Banson, he's a legal practitioner, uh, to find out uh, what these new uh, charges mean. We'll try and raise him on the line. And um, good afternoon, Mr. Banson. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Thanks for joining us and good afternoon. Good afternoon to your viewers and listeners. Well, so um, straight on, can you tell us what do these charges, new charges mean? Well, the, it's, it's the new charges, as I have seen it, um, it's based on the same facts. The transaction which um, arose from the Honorable Member of Parliament money meant to purchase vehicles and then going against the, the act as has been, or the practice as has been with the Parliament. And so the, the, the facts are not very different from what was put in the public domain from the beginning. Okay. Except that you would recall that the, the High Court judge, before whom the charges were first brought, or before whom the accused persons were first arranged, struck out some of the charges, some see. of the offenses, on the basis that they are not charges that are founded by the Special Prosecutors Act. The reason being that the Special Prosecutor is empowered by law to only prosecute offenses that fall within a certain category. And so any other offense that falls outside the category articulated by the Special Prosecutors Act does not or that is not to be prosecuted by him. So the new charges seem to concentrate on only the offenses that are covered by the Special Prosecutors Act. So okay. what would happen is that the next time we appear before the court the prosecutor would seek the leave, as lawyers will call it, or would seek permission from the court to withdraw the old charges and substitute the old charges with these new charges so that the plea of the accused person will be taken. And of course, if the lawyers have any objection to these new charges, they are liberty to make uh, whatever objection they would have for the court to make a determination of it. So these new charges, these new charges would substitute the old charges that on uh, the basis on which that this presentation Um uh, Mr. Banson, if you can position yourself while well, the line uh, was breaking, I really didn't follow your thought. But um, how different will this new uh, charges, these new charges, be against the old, uh, the the one sustained by the court after uh, his first hearings? Well, the, the new is the line better. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I think it's better now. Okay, the new, the new charges, if you go to the charge sheet, the, 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 the principal charge is that he has abused his public okay. office yeah. for private benefits. And that is an offense that is prosecutable, if I may use that word, under the Special Prosecutors Act. And so the previous offense of fraud and engaging in those of other criminal acts, which allegedly, if I may, if I may say, as uh, provided for a criminal Code have not been brought in this new charge sheet. And so there are about six or so charges. Every single charge, statement of offense, is that he has abused his public office, yeah. contrary to the provisions that have been stated therein in the, in the, the criminal code. But the facts, particulars of offense, which support the statement of, of offense, are different. They vary. So they start from where the monies are supposed to be paid directly to a supplier. Mm -hmm. The Honourable Member of Parliament is alleged to have established or in connivance or with the assistance of, a te I think, the second accused person, established a company to receive the funds, which were then rerouted back to the Honourable Minister. Okay. And he gave commission to the, allegedly, to, to, to this person and transferred money outside Ghana to purchase the cars, which he then sold the cars, all of these allegedly, to a third party. So principally, he has used his public office as, a, uh, uh, as an MP to secure loans from government and did not apply the loan for the purpose for which they were disbursed. So that is the principal charge. Yeah. And then the, the particulars of offense have been varied. So evading taxes, all of those things still come under the fact that he used his public office to secure for these advantages okay. and then did not use them for the purpose for which they were extended. The charges are the same, sorry, the same as all the charges, but the particulars which support 
each of these statements of offense is different. And they're okay. very different from the first charge because the first charge went into offenses that are covered under the criminal offenses code. Sorry, the criminal code and not the special prosecutors act. Like I said previously, you recall that the judge in her wisdom struck out some of the charges because they were not covered by the special prosecutors. Okay. It seems to me that the new charge sheet is, is, is an effort to make sure that every single charge brought against the honorable member of parliament and the other things. So it's, 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 it's definitely an add-on and not a, a replacement. Um, I would have to end here. Uh, this conversation, I think, will still continue. We'll be following up on it. Thanks so much. I've been speaking with Bobby uh, Bansain, and he is a legal practitioner, bringing his thoughts on this particular development. Let's move on. And a financial analyst, Joe Jackson, says the arrival of embattled CEO of Men's Gold, Nanapia Mensa, into the country is no guarantee that fans of customers will be paid. Joe Jackson was speaking on the, as a panelist on TV3's Key Points. CEO of Men's Gold Ghana Limited, Nanapia Mensa, popularly known as Nam One, arrived in Accra on Thursday after winning his Dubai court case. A total of $39 million is expected to be paid to Nam One by a Dubai-based gold firm, Horizon Diamonds Royal, which is reported to be indebted to Nam One. The amount seems to be giving hope to customers who believe their locked up funds should be settled with the $39 million. But Joe Jackson says it will not be that easy. If yeah. you are licensed, yes. you can go to the Bank of Ghana. DKM customers mm -hmm. have received some restitution. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fine. Even if they, they are not happy with the mm -hmm. amount they've received. But the pub, uh, public resources mm -hmm. will not be used mm -hmm. for a company that is not licensed. It's a very important sure, distinction. But, but Private legal practitioner Martin Pegu says Nanapia Mesa must cooperate with government for his assets to be liquidated so the process of payments is made easy. To help bring about a quicker resolution to the payment of your debt because as he well knows and I'm sure by now his lawyers would have advised him that look to be able to whittle down the effect of the criminal case he is better advised to take steps to make sure that the customers are paid. In a related development, Chief Executive Officer of Men's Gold Ghana Limited, Nanapia Mensa, is said to have allegedly defrauded 16,000 people to the tune of over 1.68 billion cities. This is according to court documents filed uh, by state prosecutors Friday morning and cited by TV3. My colleague Seloma Menya has more in the following report. The document further reveals that the 35-year-old businessman through his companies, Brew Marketing Consult and Men's Gold Ghana Limited, defrauded his client. Prosecutors said between January 2017 and September 2018 in Greater Accra, the company with the intent to defraud obtained the consent of one Francis Agoji and 16,000 others to part with cash of 1 billion 680 million 920,000 cities. He was arraigned early Friday morning at the Accra Circuit Court. However, the court presided over by Jane Helen Akwelekwe remanded Nanapia Mensa after the police prosecutors prayed for his remand to aid investigations. Charges were not read in court, neither was his plea taken. Nanapia Mensa has been remanded into police custody and is to reappear at the circuit court come July 26. And this followed his uh, arrival to Ghana on Thursday where he was accosted and waked away to the police CID headquarters. He was actually brought to the circuit court where the warrant for his arrest was secured. And this was also to avert the issue of um, breaking the constitutional rule of not keeping suspect for more than 48 hours, knowing that we are entering into the weekend. Nanapia Mesa, popularly known as Number One, has been charged with two counts of abetment to defraud by false pretense and two counts of abetment to carry out banking business without license, contrary to Section 61 of the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institutions Act. 2016, Act 930. His wife, Benedicta Apia, and sister, Rose Tete, have also been charged with two counts of abetment.
to defraud by false pretense and two count of abetment to carrying out banking business without a license. A warrant has since January this year been issued for the arrest of the two who are currently at large. Two of his companies, Brew Marketing Consult Limited and Men's Gold Ghana Limited, are also facing charges of defrauding by false pretense and carrying out deposit taking business without license. Nana Piamensa arrived aboard an Emirate flight on Thursday and has been interrogated by the Financial Forensic Unit of the Police CID. In other news, over 50 persons have been arrested following renewed clashes between two groups over a parcel of land at the Gomba Line Guru in Kumasi. Ibrahim Abubakar reports several makeshift structures uh, were set ablaze and other property vandalized Thursday night. It was a sleepless night for residents at Dagomba Line Goro after clashes between two groups reignited. A fire set by rampaging youth spread through the slum mostly made up of wooden structures. A team of armed police and military officers fired gunshot and tear gas in an attempt to disperse rampaging youth at Dagomba Line. But the youth threw self-made petrol grenade into the raging fire. Fire tenders were called in to control the fire. Over 50 persons were later arrested by the police. There were two groups throwing stones, using cutlasses and other implements against one another or each other. Later, we gathered at least one side to belong to the Dagombas, but the other group we did not actually know. It was a bit difficult, but uh, we managed to contain the situation. The case is under investigations. On Tuesday, the two groups clashed over the ownership of a parcel of land in the area. Three houses were burnt while seven people sustained machete wounds. Kam has returned to the area following a meeting between the Asokori Mampo Municipal Chief Executive, the security and the feuding parties. And our Sunday Regional Correspondent Ibrahim Abubakar is standing by with the latest uh, on this development. Good afternoon, Ibrahim, and thanks for joining us. So, uh, what is the latest uh, with regards to the charges against the suspects who uh, were picked up? Well, you see, um, Kam has returned in the area this okay. morning. I've been here since morning, and residents are going about with their normal activities as if nothing has happened here. With um, except the bank structures that you see, you come here, you wouldn't um, say anything has happened here. But one thing I've observed is that people, especially women and children, are still parking out of the area because for them, they cannot guarantee their safety and they do not know when the violence will reignite again. So some of them are parking out, others to remain uh, are still there. But since morning, um, I've not been. I've not cited any uniform police or military officer here. Even though I've been told by the regional command that they have non-uniform men um, on the ground to assess the situation. So, um, have the police or any of the individuals? I don't know if you have come into contact with them, especially those who uh, have been arrested. Um, any information from them? Well, yesterday. 110 of them were arrested and arraigned before the Asokori Mampon District Court. Um, for now, all of them have been remanded in police custody to appear, to reappear on Friday, July 19th. So the investigation will commence so that they will separate those who were directly involved and those who are not involved. So that is the situation now. All of them. I ha um, have been remanded in police custody and they will reappear on Friday. And with regards to the 15 who have been injured, um, I visited the KNUSD hospital this morning, okay. the Confanochi Teaching Hospital. The KNUSD Teaching Hospital and KNUSD Hospital, I saw two persons who uh, sustained gunshot wounds. They are now in a stable condition. Um, the Confanochi Teaching Hospital to 13 of them were admitted there, and out of the 13, two have been discharged as at this morning. The remaining are also 
in a stable condition and receiving treatment. Well, so you have been to the scene as of this morning. What exactly are you picking up? Uh, you, you have said that there are no police, uniformed policemen uh, around, but are you also picking information from uh, some people, core people in the community? Well, I'm, I'm still there as I'm speaking to you, and um, the information I'm picking on the ground um, that doesn't reflect what is really happening. Even though for now we say there is relative calm but um something that we are hope not hoping for but it's possible the clash can reignite even when i went there we couldn't take our phones or camera to take any picture because the moment you pull it out you have people who rush towards you and ask you not to take any shots so um <laughs> there is tension underground but if you are just moving about you wouldn't see it unless you speak to some of the residents. So I wouldn't say there is absolute scam there. Um, it's relative. And the police told me they have their non uniform men there and um, they will keep patrolling the area until they make sure that there is absolute scam in the area. Well, Ibrahim, thanks for the updates and keep an eye on happenings there. We'll get back to you subsequently. I have been speaking with Ibrahim Abubakar and he is our Ashanti Regional Correspondent. This is still Midday Live. Let's do other stories. And the alleged sale of the GTV Gavin Channel to KBL Media is a story TV3 News has been following up on for the past two weeks. In our story of the week today, we focus on a directive by the NCA for the deal to be cancelled, plus events that preceded it. Here is a report by Kwatri uh, Afre Nyama. I'm not aware that any channel of um, the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation has been sold. I'm not aware of that. Information Minister Kojo Opon Kroma in an earlier interview denying any knowledge of the alleged sale of the GTV Gavin channel. That was on 3rd July when tension was mounting at a state broadcaster. On Monday, July 8, unionized staff of the corporation hoisted red flags at the two main entrances of GBC. Among other things, they demanded swift investigations into some allegations of corruption against management. Workers of the state broadcaster also raised critical questions about what, in their view, is an attempt by management to hold the payment of end-of-service benefits. The workers say this will make them worse off when they retire. The following day, that's on Tuesday, management of GBC organized a news conference to rebut all the allegations. Acting Director General Augustus Yamsin described the claims as untrue, indicating that it was by two aggrieved staff who were on a mission to disgrace management. What is happening in GBC is not backed by the union. Union not staff, both the local union executives and the division union, don't have a hand in what is happening here. What is happening is the behavior of two disgruntled staff who misbehave and were punished and were going around to destroy GBC management. At that news conference, the acting director general also contradicted comments by the information minister that the ministry had not been informed about the deal. Whatever management decision we take here, if we need to report to the minister, we report to him, this is what we have done. And for that matter, we have reported to him, we have written to him, stated what we have done. The NMC subsequently summoned the GBC board to a meeting on Wednesday and demanded answers. TV3 news sources within the commission said the board was asked to clarify what exactly it wants to do. Again, the board of the state broadcaster was asked to explain whether the deal was an outright sale. The board maintained that it wasn't a sale but an MOU to partner with KBL Media. The National Media Commission then asked that the entire deal be halted. The commission also called for broad consultations to be conducted before any side decision is taken in future. It is not clear what the NMC's directive would mean for the operations of KBL's Ajimpa TV. By the time of filing this report, it was airborne. For TV3 News, Kwache Afreniyama.
Let's throw the spotlight on sanitation now. MV Ablikuma West Municipal Assembly has started demolition of buildings sited on the Bebe Lagoon in Bebeise, a suburb of Dansuman. The tax force from the assembly together with armed policemen pulled down several structures in the early hours of Friday morning. The babies uh, looked on helplessly as the excavators pulled down their houses. Many struggled to reclaim what they could from the remains. Supported by a team of police, the tax force from the Ablikuma West Municipal Assembly pulled down several structures sited along the Bibi Lagoon at Bibeise, a suburb of Dansuman. <laughs> Hundreds were left homeless. Even though the residents admitted they were given notice by the assembly last month, they say it's too short a notice. The demolition team, however, went on with the exercise but intermittently halted to allow residents to pack their remaining belongings. Some of the residents are seeking composition from both the assembly and chiefs of the area because they claim they have documents for the lands. If you want to sack rat from his whole crowd, do give him one week or two weeks. Mm. Somebody who has stayed here for since 1992, over 90, 30 years, and you want to demolish the building. Some of them have documents. You see, they have one. You have documents? They have been there. Can you show proof of your right? documents? Eh? Can you show proof of your documents? Yes. Can I see with my eyes? I don't have it here. Who, who gave you the documents? <laughs> see we, with we your head. We brought the land from the chiefs. <laughs> I later followed him to the chief's house, who almost all the residents say sold the place for them. We are in support of the Assembly's decision to drench the lagoon, but not for them to demolish people's building. That land is for our father, and we have documents on it. The District Chief Executive of the Blokuma West Municipal Assembly, George Cyril Blay, said he has support from all the chiefs of the area. We wrote on the buildings, and I think the deadline was uh, 18th, 18th June, right? So we've even given them enough time, mm -hmm. and we had an engagement. They even showed us where they would want us to start from. So it's more like... So this is their calling, not your calling? Yes, because, look, the, it's a perennial thing there. Mm. They go through hell when it rains. The slightest rain, they are going to have the place flooded. So it's more like eh, we are helping them come out of what they are not happy about. He hinted the assembly will return next week, Monday, to continue with the demolition exercise. Meanwhile, structures sited along the roads from Dansuman Exhibition to Dansuman Last Stop were also demolished. Buildings have gone down. Residents are suffering the little that is left for them. The district chief executive is here saying they'll be here again on Monday to continue the entire demolition exercise. But today, they've been spared. Few buildings have gone down, and Monday, they will continue. From here at the base, my name is Joseph Armstrong, reporting for TV3. And traders around Kumoji Clinic in Accra have been given 200 cities each compensation to vacate the area. TV3 sources indicate a demolition exercise will take place after all affected persons have been compensated. A report by Harry Mensah and Rashid Osmanu. The traders say they had been notified earlier this year by land guards who claimed to be reporting to government officials. The notification was on their shops. Attempts to ensure peaceful demolition saw the traders lined up to receive the compensation of 200 cities each. But some of them had issues against the authorities. <laughs> They said they are relocating those who work here further down. However, the place is too small to contain us, so the government should come to our aid. They are coming to suck us. Meanwhile, 
We don't have anywhere to trade. I could go into stealing because there is no work to do. They said they only give us the 200 cities out of PT, so we should leave the place from tomorrow. The land guard announced that anyone who has been compensated should leave. The demolition exercise is expected to take place once everyone has been compensated. Stay with us, news returns shortly. Let's do business now and some fuel stations cited by the Ghana Standards Authority for under delivery to customers are now dispensing the right quantity of fuel while Gold and Goodness Energy at Kalinia Kaswa are dispensing clients, uh, compensating clients through a give back promotion. Inspecting some of the four stations, Executive Secretary of the Chamber of Petroleum uh, Consumers Ghana, COPEC, Duncan Amwa, encouraged oil marketing companies to ensure value for money at all times. Out of the 65 fuel stations visited by the GSA, 10 were cheating and two had broken the GSA seal on the 10 liter can without permission. A visit by Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana, COPEC, on June 13 to seven of the cited fuel outlets along the Malam Kaswa portion of the N1 revealed some had resolved the problem. Others did not have the 10 liter can for the quantity test, while others promised to deal with the challenge. A second inspection by COPEC, Goodness Energy, had acquired the 10 liter can and test conducted showed the station was dispensing the right quantity of fuel. Goodness Energy has reduced the price of its fuel as compensation to customers. Some drivers encourage the authorities to sustain the monitoring. The station is now dispensing the right amount of fuel after they were exposed for under delivery. I mean, Copac should continue inspecting them so that they will not cheat with the drivers because buying fuel nowadays is very expensive. The designer of the 10-liter can and the consultant for Copac, Kwesi Owusu-Buedu, explains the device. So there's a tolerance level of 0.5%. So you see there's a mark down there, and there's a mark up the zero mark. So anything between the two marks is also acceptable uh, anytime. And we expect that the dealers to be using the, this thing regularly, I mean once a while, to be checking the, this thing. So, so that the confidence will be developed among the, the, the clients and then with the, the dealer too. Some OMCs have promised to give back to customers. The Goal station at Galilea near Kaswa started the give back after agreeing with Copec to compensate customers. The Gold Station at Galilea near Kaswa has started the give back after agreeing with Copec to compensate customers, giving out a gallon of fuel for free. We decided to reward our customers uh, who, who felt that they were cheated. So we decided to embark on this loyalty promo, which started yesterday through today to tomorrow. Uh, the promo is like this. When you buy 100 Ghana of petrol or diesel and above, we give you 25 Ghana cities worth of foil free. Some customers noted the need for the right thing to be done going forward. It's the best thing that they are doing. Because if, if there was an issue, now say today they, they, they'll give us back what we lost. It's good. They should do the right thing and let us get value for money. I don't buy from those stations in Kaswa mentioned as cheating customers. Duncan Amwa called for value for money. So continue to encourage consumers to ask for the 10 liter when you feel that a uh, hundred Ghana should have brought me to a quarter tank. I still have empty tank. Request for the 10 liter immediately. If they do not have, then it presupposes that someone is doing something shady and they want to hide something. 
In other news, an International Maritime Bureau report on piracy and armed robbery against ships showed six vessels were hijacked in the Gulf of Guinea in 2018. The report further showed that the pirates fired at 18 vessels, boarded 143 vessels, whilst attempted attacks were made on 34 others. These were disclosed at the opening of a capacity development training for ECOWAS Maritime Center uh, in Accra. The International Chamber of Commerce's International Maritime Bureau's latest annual piracy report has revealed that piracy increased on the world's seas in 2018 with a marked rise in attacks against ships and crews around West Africa. The Piracy Reporting Center recorded 201 incidents of maritime piracy and armed robbery in 2018 up from 180 in 2017 worldwide. Vessels were boarded by pirates well outside territorial waters with crew kidnapped and taken into Nigeria where they were held for ransom. The Gulf of Guinea remains increasingly dangerous for seafarers. Reports of attacks in waters between the Ivory Coast and the Democratic Republic of Congo more than doubled in 2018, accounting for all six hijackings worldwide. 13 out of the 18 ships fired upon, 130 of the 141 hostages taken globally and 78 of 83 seafarers kidnapped for ransom all occurred in the Gulf of Guinea. The region saw a significant new spike in violence in the last quarter of 2018. There have been calls for increased cooperation and sharing of intelligence between the Gulf of Guinea's littoral states for effective action against pirates. Kidnapping of crew for ransom, illegal bunkering and illegal fishing pose a significant threat to our prosperity, leaving our people in deep despair. But to win this fight against maritime piracy and other transnational crimes requires well-trained professionals backed by necessary resources and legal framework to ensure criminals are brought to justice to serve as deterrents. The establishment of the ECOWAS Multinational Maritime Coordinating Center aimed at harnessing resources and coordinating efforts in fighting crimes at sea. So for instance, if a vessel has uh, indicated that it's leaving Ghana to go to, say, uh, Nigeria, and halfway through the journey, all of a sudden we notice that the vessel has turned around and with no apparent reason, then we should still begin to find out why all of a sudden you said we are going to Nigeria and you have turned your uh, course and we are heading somewhere else. Ghana is hosting the Gulf of Guinea Zone F, which is comprised of Cote d'Ivoire, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea and Burkina Faso. So that we foster that interagency collaboration, coordination and information sharing, which is very critical in the context of fighting maritime crimes and related activities at sea. The five-day capacity development training drew personnel from all maritime agencies in the country to ensure deeper understanding of the concept and roles for efficiency. And Onya FM, a member of a media general group, has lined up a tall list of activities to ensure that residents in Nungwa and its environs enjoy a memorable festive season. The Onya Festival train has made the Nungwa uh, Plejo Festival its first port of call with a special food contest and a home war music jam. Here are some highlights from the cooking contests. <music> Once every year in July, the chiefs and people of Nungwa celebrate the Pledge of Festival, traditionally celebrated as a forerunner to the annual Homo Festival. As part of activities to guarantee an unforgettable season, Onyo FM came through with a cooking contest on July 11. The day was filled with lots of excitement as some residents exhibited their cooking prowess.
It was embraced by many who have so much love for local dishes. Participants were awarded with packages from sponsors. The Homo Music Jam comes off on July 12th at the forecourt of the Nungwa Traditional Authority with a host of homegrown talent. Music Jam featuring state shakers like Screwface, Article One, Knee Funny, Bandy Boy, Tashi Boy. Well, thanks for watching. That's all in news for this afternoon. My name is AC Benewa Otu. Stay tuned and enjoy the rest of our programs. Good afternoon.